<laughs> All right, I think we've got everybody in here that can fit. And it is 10.01.21, so I guess we can start. I'm Jesse Peterson, and I've been a WordPress developer for a decade now. Well, I've been a user for a decade. I've owned Peterson Media Group, which I formed in uh, six and a half years ago. So I've also been a Genesis theme developer um, since the beginning of Genesis. And that's all I do is Genesis themes. And you know, a few years ago, Studio Press re started releasing the responsive themes. It was catching on around 2012. So that was when I started learning it. And everything's moving to responsive and further to actually doing mobile first. People want to lower their bandwidth. People want a better experience on the phones. A lot of people still have really awful websites when you look at it on the phone. I'm a big consumer of phone data in the morning, two hours on the couch every morning. Um, and I believe that the key to getting a better website is to look at the apps that we use every day. They are made for your phone, and they work very well. The buttons are in the right place, and if it's a good app, you don't need to go to a website to change much, maybe two-factor authentication or some, some security features, that kind of stuff. Uh, Twitter is a good example of that. So we're going to look at some apps. So how many of you are actually addicted to your phone? Like if you have it in the other room, it hurts. Yeah, me too. Um, it's in my pocket. It's not even on the table. <clears throat> so when we consume news on the mobile web, you get things that look like this. That's AP. Um, it's not responsive. And on an iPhone, those ads never even appear. I believe they're just animated GIFs. Um, so you pinch and zoom. So have to pinch and zoom to pretty much even read the, the title on that one. But iPhone now has the reader view. Uh, you push that little button up in there, and you get the text of the article. It's like, why don't they go ahead and do that for the users? So since the news sites suck, they came out with news apps. Recently, there's the news app for iPhone. I found Wildcard a few months ago. I kind of like it. Um, it it's kind of just RSS-based to pull in the news that way. Um, but people actually like to browse and, and see things. So I pocket all the things. So if I go to AP, I pocket it, and then I read it later. I do it on Twitter all the time. Um, someone has a link in their tweet, and I just long press it, and I pocket it, and I read it later, and I can favorite it or, or hide it. So I actually pocketed 1.5 million words last year. Uh, I didn't know that Pocket kept track, but they sent me an email in January. Congratulations, you did over a million words. I was like, well, I didn't read them all. <coughs> so. I can also consume the RSS feeds through these apps, and this is Feedly. I've got some categories, Mac and design. So pretty much everything that isn't Mac here is WordPress. I don't even know what news is, because I don't remember opening it. But it might be WordPress news for all I know. And that it's formatted nicely. And you can see I've got my top two buttons, Pocket and Buffer. We'll talk about Buffer a little later. And it's got. A really nice menu. You can change the display of all the posts as it goes down the page, change um, categories and the order and all that stuff. So it's got really nice features, and websites should do that too. And I am on Twitter all the time. So a good Twitter client can do anything. The top used buttons are right there at the bottom where your thumb is. So the iPhone 6 came out and people started not being able to reach the top of the screen while they're holding it with one, one hand. Um, so the only ones that are up there, if you're in the main view, is Compose. So just hit that with your other hand. You can change your bio. You can mute people. And if you hit this long press, these one, two on the right, I can mute, see my list, see my analytics, and see my favorites, and search, and see my profile. So it does everything. 
I never ever go to Twitter.com. When I type in Twitter <coughs> in my browser, it goes it goes to Twitter counter because I, I like to check my followers and unfollowers and, and trends like that. So I suggest keeping the popular actions that you do in an app and on a website down low. So I've actually started putting menus at the bottom. So Instagram does it, Twitter does it, email does it. I've got a full featured email client and I can work all day on the couch, which does annoy me because I'm not very efficient, but I can address everybody who's contacted me that day to reply. I can see my calendar, my files, contacts, files I can view my Dropbox if I wanted to add it and it's got all my Google things there. Uh, it's got a focus and other inbox. I can actually search things that are in my archive stuff years back. So it, it does take a little while to load but I've got access to all of my stuff. And I freaking love Buffer. It's really annoying to be on Twitter and you just retweet everything that you see over and then you take over the entire stream and your friends hate you and they're like, would you just shut up for a while? So you can add a custom schedule and that will be on the next screen. I've got all my accounts that I want to ever tweet. One of them is a little Easter egg there that only has one follower that I'm having a little fun with because no one's discovered it but now it will be discovered. Um, so I just created one. I'm showing what Buffer app looks like. I added an image. And so I can share it immediately, share it next in my schedule, give it a custom schedule, or just add it to a queue. It's got analytics. Where I can look at content, my schedule, or my settings. So my schedule, I can post 42 times on a weekday. So if I put it in the queue, it spreads them out. I've se selected what time I want it to go out. Sometimes it's 15, 20, 40 minutes apart. And I don't annoy people as much, but I'm... I'm a high tweeter. Now on the weekends, I don't do that much, so I'll load it up and maybe it'll tweet until 2 p.m. and it's done on Sunday or something like that. And since I work at home, I'm all alone. I got my wife and she's downstairs or doing bills or doing errands and my son's in school, so I keep my friends in Slack. And the Slack app has everything that the desktop Slack app has. And I can see all my people, my teams. I've got other teams over there on the right. I can change settings. I can invite people. <coughs> it's, it's probably getting used as much as Twitter by me right now. And I really, really do like the mobile app. So let's look at a website. If you're brave enough, last week was election week. And I didn't know what we were going to be going to the polls for specifically in Hillsborough County over in Tampa. So I decided to search and it forwarded me to electionsfl.org, which I thought was weird because I'm looking at Hillsborough County. Why is this like a Florida one? And I went, oh my, that font is huge. There's no good padding. What are those buttons? I was. <laughs> I was very offended by it. <laughs> um, I did not go to the polls that day because I could not get the information I wanted. I was like, I, I don't know why we're going. So it's like, really? So at the bottom it said view full site. There's the full site. Isn't it so much better? It's beautiful. I pinched and zoomed and I still couldn't find the information I wanted. So I gave up and I went up to my desk and went to work. So let's get on the same page about what is mobile first? And that depends because there's two different angles. There's design, which is to design to the smallest screen first, where you don't even give thought to the, the desktop experience yet. You're just like, what do I want it to look like on a phone? And then there's development. How do you want it to load the assets to optimize it for the mobile experience versus a desktop broadband experience? So mobile first does not equal degrading the desktop experience. It can actually be a better experience because of the features of touch and the, the iOS or Android integrations when you hover 
or you've got sharing, like all that stuff is just baked into the phone. <clears throat> so I've got a few mobile pet peeves. And number one is the hamburger icon. I, I have a love-hate relationship. It's small. Most people now know what it means, but there's a lot of data. Hamburger bad, menu eats hamburger, and why and how to avoid hamburger menus. These are all really good posts. I've got my slide deck posted on speaker deck and I tweeted it out this morning. Those are some really, really good reads. Morton is hilarious. He, he did a really good one in WordCamp Miami earlier this year that you have to see and this is a great post by him. I read every one of these start to finish. So if you're interested in knowing about the hamburger menu and why or why not, it's great. And a lot of people don't take the time when they've started with the desktop view and they've moved down to mobile to make the fonts look really nice on mobile. If you got a 15 point font on desktop, it's just too big for mobile. You're wasting space. Uh, sometimes you've only got four words on a line and you're just scrolling forever to just consume three paragraphs. And the comment section, if a lot of them on desktop, there's enough width there that they can nest it in pretty deep and you get four or five levels and it's still long enough. I've seen ones where there's two words per line and it just goes all the way down and you've got a 7,000 pixel comment because it's only two words per line. <clears throat> and I've actually got several times where I've been stuck on a page because they've embedded a Google map side to side and you scroll and you get to the map and it didn't go all the way past and you can't do anything because now you're just scrolling around on the map. <laughs> and they didn't have any padding and there's no way to get around it and you just leave. So don't do that. So let's look at how mobile first started. And you might be surprised. There's a really good post on deep dot design called mobile first. It's about why it's so easy to do mobile first wrong. It's about a 15 to 25 minute read depending on your speed or how much time you're thinking about it. It's probably not safe to read to your six year old. Um, he does like to drop some F-bombs in there, but they are appropriate to the frustration level that's being experienced sometimes. So he mentions this guy that's in this next slide, Luke Rob Robleski. Nine years ago, he knew that mobile first was coming. And nine years ago, I just was finding out what WordPress was. So he's a pretty smart guy. <clears throat> and he's got a post here, lukew.com, where he talks about mobile experience could be better. Mobile is increasing in traffic all the time. So nine years ago, he was a pretty smart guy to figure this out. So he saw it all the way back then. So that's a wasted slide because I just said it. My first responsive site was three years after he wrote that post. And that's just responsive, just so it looks nice on a phone. And there it is. The, that yellow thing got added a couple of years later. But this was a heavy customization to the 1140 theme from Studio Press, and it looks okay on a phone, but nothing's really changed because it's not designed mobile first. There's no hamburger menu if we were even going to do one back then. Uh, it doesn't say menu, so all of the items are just there, taking up space, and we can't see the bottom of the content. So I apologize, that was the best I could do in 2012, and she hasn't paid me to change it, so it still looks like that. <clears throat> I did my first mobile first site at the end of 2013, and I'm kind of happy about who it was for. So I sketched this, and I took a picture of it, and I emailed it to him. I said, well, what do you think if your posts look like this? And he said, looks great. Try to code it. So I did. It worked pretty much how I wanted to, um, but there were browser issues trying to keep those things square with CSS uh, back then. The browsers did not let me use some of the things with enough uh, reach to keep people happy in that thing called IE. So we dumped the sharing completely, and I think it launched without the sharing buttons, but everything else was 
pretty much the same and I was able to see more of the photo that way. Um, so what am I doing now with mobile first? This is how the menu button should be. I could use the hamburger menu on the side there, but it was going to get a little bit close to the, the logo there. So I did kill the hamburger inside that button, but I make it look like a button. And I was actually doing that in 2013, uh, the site after that Chris Brogan site. I did do that menu button. So I've, I've been using that code now for almost three years. And then as you scroll down, the header shrinks. So let's go back. So it's probably about 40 pixels there. It's about 30 pixels there. And it's got color because it, there's going to be content going behind it. If you scroll fast, it disappears completely. It gets out of the way. The content's king, so now you can read the content. If you scroll back up, it goes back to look like that. And if you touch it, it just slides down. <clears throat> nice, opaque background. Easy enough to touch, but small enough that it doesn't look like it's taking over the screen. So I found some good sites that I do enjoy consuming in the wild. The Atlantic is really good, and they've managed to have some attractive ads at the top that push it down. But as you scroll, the, the header area shrinks to allow you to share or search, and it's completely out of the way. And you'll notice that the sharing stuff also appears right after a little blurb. And there's very little padding on the sides. It's a really long line. The line height's good. They've even got block quotes. And they've inserted ads in the middle of the content. And you can go to the next story and the previous story down at the bottom. So I really think that's really well done. It almost feels like one of those news apps that we saw at the beginning. Washington Post also does a pretty nice job. L lot more ads more wasted space. Uh, my one complaint with it, let's see if the laser's there. That button is not the menu. That's If you're logged in, you can keep a list of the stories that you like. So the very first time I hit that, it takes you to a page that says, sorry, you're not logged in. Uh, you screwed up. So I don't really like that. Um, but it is still well done, so the menu is right there. And when you click it, that's what it does does the job, and actually pushes the content over. Um, so it works OK. <clears throat> and I was at the sushi place two nights ago. And my friend was telling me that Jar Jar Binks is really the Sith Lord. So uh, yeah, yeah. I had to find out about this. He said, yeah, it's a Reddit article. So I Googled, <laughs> went to Reddit, and I was like, oh, I just have another slide for my presentation. Thank you very much. I think this is very well done. It's very consumable. The font's small enough um, that there's a lot of content there. It's a little small to just try to consume this way, but when you're on a retina display, it, it reads really well. Uh, it's not like you need to do too much and because of iOS. I could share it if I wanted to. Um, I, I don't need any kind of sharing stuff up here because the operating system takes care of that. And back to this article. This entire website, deep.design, is great. So this is the home page layout. It's article after article with a really nice picture that's full width. And it's got a really nice feature that tells you how long of a read it is. And they're pretty long reads, so that one's 19 minutes. And so on the first view, when you tap a post, it's full height. And that little arrow kind of ding, 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 and you, when you push it, it scrolls you to the top of it. And I'm just kind of illustrating here that the headings are nice and large. It's got pretty good line height and font size. And if you scroll way down, a little button shows up that takes you back up to the top. There's no sharing on it. It's, it's pretty bare bones, but I think it does the job because, again, iOS will take care of, of sharing it for you. <coughs> So, do we have any questions about designing for mobile? If you have any for development, I talked about it in Tampa a couple months ago, uh, but I can take questions on the development side too. What's yes. the philosophy of promoting like header bar? So, like, when you scroll, it just sticks on the top. 
Yeah, th that's preferred or for it to disappear uh, as you scroll. But yeah, I like to have it either visible all the time or visible at some point in the page. Um, a lot of people don't know you can just double tap up at the top to, to scroll up. Uh, if, if it's stuck up at the actual physical top, I like it to be visible as you're scrolling. Yes? How do you take your clients through the process of like starting from local and saying like, okay, like we're going we're gonna to start here and think about this. Like obviously, <coughs> probably a mixture of like understanding who their audience is and like uh -huh. how many people are coming to the site, where their processes are going to be coming from, but like have you ever given me You do. You do have to charge more because it's a lot more work because if, if you're going with anything that's existing, you have to flip the style sheet on its head because the media queries are no longer for going down in size for mobile. The media queries are to go up into desktop. So you have to rework, rework it. Um, if you're new at it, it's just going to take you longer to get into that, that mindset. I don't really get any pushback, but it's like a long conversation to tell a story pretty much like I did. So it's a 20 minute conversation to tell them this is why we're doing it. Uh, what's been pretty successful is I sent a sketch to a client that had already agreed to it. And so when I'm in the initial conversation, I just send that sketch in my first reply and say, this is what I'm doing for another client. Is this what you want? I tell them the price. They don't know that it's higher than what it used to be. And they say yes or no, and it's pretty much whether or not they have the budget for it. I'm not getting any pushback on, I don't believe in that philosophy. You do still have to think about, you do still have to design for it. Definitely. I, I, you do the wireframes. Um, so you do wireframes for mobile? Yeah. And if you get a, a PSD and it's only got desktop, you've got to go back to the designer and say, well, I need the phone because I'm not going to be stepping it down for you. I want you to get creative and show me a good mobile experience. You were next, Damien. Yeah, so um, you mentioned this in one of your slides where I think it was the Atlantic had nicely placed ads, or at least it kind of flowed with the rest of the design. Who, what, um, what other ad services have you worked with, uh, or have you worked with other ad services where they kind of do a little better in design than, say, Google Ads? Or the current project I'm working on right now, she's using Ad Thrive. Uh, it does a pretty good job placing them, and, and currently it's serving a mobile website for her, and we're going to have to turn that off when the theme goes live. Uh, what we're noticing, though, is it's a really complicated process of pinging who's available for an ad, who wants to bid on it, how much money do they have available, how much is this ad worth. It takes like two seconds. It's, it's absolutely horrible time wow. and, and performance, but it does a good job placing it. So for that, we're happy. And so far, that's the only one that I've had in quite a while that's had ads. Okay. Most of my people are not monetizing it that way. Right. What's the biggest gotcha pitfall between iOS and Android? Haven't found any yet. Well, except for breakpoints. I mean, there's a million breakpoints for Android. So occasionally, you'll get a complaint that on a certain device, this view doesn't look good and you just have to tweak some padding or something like that so something doesn't break or, or snap at the wrong place. So there's sometimes a little bit to do with the media queries. But they, they operate the same as far as what they can share and, and save and stuff like that. So are, you, are you using, in, in the code, are you using percentages to uh, <coughs> size your, your containers? Yes. 
Sometimes. Yeah. Um, but since the breakpoints in the media queries are pixel based, you can say max width of 600 pixels when you know that your max screen width is going to be 800, and that's going to leave you some room for padding. So you don't have to use percentages, but a lot of the stuff is 100%, and then you control the actual width with padding from the edge of the screen. Makes a pretty nice way. Um, the examples you gave of the mobile designs were mostly news-based stories, or news-based sites where you were consuming just like mm -hmm. news articles. Do you have any examples of sites where there's like functionality built into them that you would recommend to look at, like shopping or just other things? Like I work in the golf industry, so like it's not so much about consuming content. I think I can come up with a post and, and do that. Yeah, I use Firefox Developer Edition, and it's got a really nice way to do mobile uh, with a command, and you can create custom profiles of devices and step through them. And it's really nice to do because I can have a mobile thing right here, and then all the inspect element, you know, all the code stuff is right there, all in the same browser window. And if you've got a big monitor as a second monitor, I can stack two or three together and, and compare all the way down. So yeah, I use that. I, I don't know if the regular Firefox has that ability, because I, I switched about nine months ago. But I like developer edition. Do you prefer to Chrome DevTools? Yes. Uh, an easy comparison between Chrome and Firefox is Chrome is very RAM heavy, <laughs> and <laughs> Firefox is very CPU heavy. Any given time, I'm in Firefox with my 12 windows open with my 400 tabs. Uh, my CPU is at 97%. And on my Mac Mini, the temperature is running about 197 most of the time. So I've got a fan on my computer, and the fan is running full blast. So um, I'm taking donations for a Mac Pro. <laughs> <laughs> you need it for a Mac Pro. <laughs> Anybody else? Those of us who are, um... It's still not really being taught, and I'm taking care of that soon. <laughs> Very soon. Yeah. I, <clears throat> right. Um, it, there's a process that you could do if you found a mobile first theme to look at how the style sheet is built. and figure. That's how I did it. I figured out how is this being built. Um, there's some nice ones on GitHub. To use, but the process is still a little black magic. So we need to fix that. Yes. So I know you're using the Genesis framework. So are you starting from the uh, an existing theme based on what the client needs, and then bringing in um, code that you used before, kind of on? So yeah. To There's two ways to do it. Um, Brian Gardner. Re released mobile first, which was his starter theme version of Genesis sample theme uh, about a year and a half ago. And over the summer, I converted it to SaaS for developers and kept it mobile first. So I kind of optimized some stuff for SaaS. So that is my Genesis sample that I start with as a starter theme. Um, I'm currently converting some of their other ones that have come out in the last four or five months to mobile first and keeping the SaaS because I was using SaaS to do it. And if a client has another theme, then I have to bring that into that too. So it's a two or three step process unless you've already done that first conversion to mobile first. It will give you a headache. Um, you get on a roll converting it to mobile first. Uh, but then finding all the little things and all the views that, oh, I missed that media query, I missed that media query, it's tedious, and it'll probably take you 20 hours to convert. 10 to 20. Yes? Are there any tools that can give you kind of the rundown, the jump-up for creature you created, Frankenstein, and you say, I want this thing tested. I want to see how it's going to run in all different aspects. And then so you have this evaluative tool and test the whole thing, and it gives you a 
list. I mean, I'm just thinking on the top of my head. Okay, here on this page, you've got this. You might want to consider this. It takes a lot of time loading or whatever. Interns. <laughs> I, I don't know of any automated tools that will flag anything for you. Um, I do a lot. I've got about 12 profiles in my Firefox <coughs> media look, and I'll just rotate and go to the next one and rotate, go to the next one, scroll around. And you got to go to every page template to see it. Um, I've been converting one for quite a while because every now and then I find another one and I'm like, oh, I don't want to commit that to GitHub yet. Yes? Um, when we're dealing with clients and talking to them about why mobile first is important, <coughs> do you suggest that um, guys Luke's website or any other resources to kind of help convince them? Because I know I've dealt with like older clients or clients that just aren't, you know, as up with the times and they don't really totally understand why mobile is so important, um, even if I throw, you know, statistics and everything else at them. So do you have like any suggestions for that at all? I would probably suggest taking some snippets out of the deep design article mm -hmm. because he makes some really good points and they don't need to consume the entire thing to understand the main main ideas of it. Um, I should write a post and you can all link to it. That'd be great. <laughs> yes? Would you be uh, open to sharing one of your profiles in your uh, Firefox developer? Sure. Oh yeah, and I closed it. So this is going to take a little while, but I'll drag one over. I don't think anything will actually pop over there until well, I drag what it. Is the most popular I've been basing everything off of iPhone 6 right now. It's just a tad longer and wider than the 5 and 5S. So that's what I've primarily been using. And on the dark side? Um, they vary so much. I just. I usually do 768 by 1024 and then start stepping down because the, the tablets vary so much and I have no idea what the most popular phone one is. All right, I'm getting spinning load. Any other questions while this loads and I'll go back to it. Yeah. I do it manually and I do have several generations of phones at home and iPad mini. Yeah. And I've got some people sending me a couple of Android devices here in the next couple of weeks. I've I had one that actually had an issue that was only available if you're on an Android phone. Not an Android tablet, not an an iOS phone. It was really annoying. Sure. I don't know why I'm spinning up. I know that uh, these like Chrome development tools and stuff like that, they have that drop down where you can select the phone. Mm -hmm. so is, that, is that off or not accurate? Uh, it's pretty accurate. Okay. Yeah. Jesse. Yes. Can I share a tool real quick? Sure. <clears throat> For those that don't have access to lots of different devices, there's a service out there called BrowserStack.com, and it essentially boots up all different versions of Androids and computers and desktops. And the best part is if you work in open source like most of us do, it's free. What's it called? BrowserStack.com. I like free, so. So this one's still in development, and it's quite blurry on this screen. <clears throat> but you can see that when you're over here, it starts showing you this. And I've got my profiles here. I've got 4, 4S, 5, 5S, 6, and 6 Plus and 6 Plus S. And then these are more of the popular tablet and desktop and laptop resolutions. So if we went to 6 plus, just expands a little bit, rotate it. So far, the Firefox developer doesn't have that drop down where it has all the mobile phone apps. This... No, this is the developer. Yeah, so the, what I was saying, like Chrome has those little drop down. Oh, no. Okay. Not, not set and labeled or anything okay. nice yeah. and neat. I think Safari, one of the latest Safari ones, not that you would ever develop in it. Um, but yeah, it's got some labels on it too. Anybody else? 
Well, thank you. Don't be bashful, I'm on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs>